were just touring Germany and I wanted to ask uh, in your experience or your feeling, has something changed in the concerts after the pandemic? Mm, no. Uh, right now everything is pretty much going back to normal, even in Germany, which is a little latent in comparison to all other European countries, as you may have recognized. Um, but the shows went fantastic. Of course, there were still some people um, trying to protect themselves with uh, uh, face masks, but that was a minority. The majority was um, not wearing any face face masks, and uh, the atmosphere was as good as it always had been. Before we went on this tour, we were... Um, playing a couple of festivals and uh, we recognize the same sensation everywhere. So this is pretty much back to normal, I have to say. How was your own feeling in the first gigs after the COVID? Uh, I was just relieved to be back on stage um, when we, we did a few shows in 21 in our hometown, for example. And there were still some restrictions, such as um, if it was a capacity like a thousand people, only 600 people were allowed to get in. Um, and I really recognized the um, the urge of people to have cultural um, entertainment, and they were breathing every second of it in. You know, it, there was a desperate feeling, a desperate need for music. And um, so it was for me when we played in uh, 21, these shows. And um, of course, when we entered the stage for the first time in 2022, it was pretty much the same. But profession and business as usual comes back very quickly. So I was very grateful for every moment, but it was not the same sensation and not the same feeling like, oh, what am I supposed to do and how will people react? Because, you know, everything was pretty much set after the first show. So for me, it was really embracing uh, the events individually and every concert, as it always has been, is slightly different. The way people react, you know, the way you have to motivate people, maybe even that in the case of Blind Guardian is barely ever difficult because people are you know just there to have a great party and um, we're trying to deliver that so um, for me the feeling went back to normal there as well i was really happy to be on stage and i was happy to see the people and yeah i'm hoping that things are still uh, proceeding into that direction we could talk about the court machine album then i'm afraid uh, we have to address the kind of same theme here did the pandemic have uh, any effect in uh, making this album? It did and it did not. Um, when we started the pre-production, that was around the time when uh, the world started to go crazy and um, we couldn't hide ourselves from it. So um, you were um, constantly uh, confronted with all the information and with, you know, with, with all the madness which was going on. So um, when doing the pre-production and also the recordings, that was, of course, a topic we discussed, um, but it did not keep us away from the regular work and from the way we uh, approach an album. So in that regard, there was no difference. Um, of course, when seeing that the pandemic lasted even longer than expected, um, there was no need for us to uh, to speed up the production process. Um, and we took our time. So in that particular uh, case, it might have even been an advantage because we could uh, focus ourselves more on the music itself, apart from the fact that there was nothing else to do. You know, we could go to the studio, but barely anywhere else. And that was kind of annoying, but um, it was the way it was. So for the music, it probably helped in that regard. But on the other hand, uh, once the album was finished, um, because of the shortage of goods, we had to postpone the release of the album. And that was the big disadvantage. So we lost one year there. Also, a big disadvantage was that um, we announced the Somewhere Far Beyond anniversary um, shows for 2021. And we, you know, um, 
put everything into smaller capacities already to be prepared for whatever would happen within the pandemic. Um, but we had to postpone these shows again and again. And even though, you know, the God Machine has been released just recently, we're not in a position to announce shows because, uh, you know, our we always carried the uh, Somewhere Far Beyond shows on our shoulders. Luckily, most of them are accomplished now, so we really can put our focus on future things. But we lost another year there. So all in all, um, the pandemic has cost us two years. And um, what is hard to grasp and sometimes hard to understand, we will not get back this time. So, you know, it's economically and financially a loss. You mentioned all the challenges that the pandemic brought to planning things ahead. Uh, how is the situation now? Has uh, has this time kind of changed the industry as a whole? How is it to plan things forward at the moment, for example? I believe it, it has changed minds in uh, terms of insecure, becoming more insecure. And, you know, it has stolen confidence because uh, things are not as granted as they were before. That is um, the case here at the moment. And um has not gone back to normal completely um it demands different qualities and a different vision uh, I, i would say um in saying that i mean you have to be more flexible than in the past um, it is it has become more difficult to be strict and straight and you know just make your four or five years plan in advance. We never did that, uh, to be fair, but um, there still was a certain confidence that things would, you know, develop into such direction once we start things uh, going. Um, that is kind of not existent at the moment. Uh, saying that, I mean, uh, we have not planned 2023 completely and uh, in detail which would have been def different in the past. You know, once an album is released, we already, you know, have announced the touring for this album and we are about to go on tour for this album. And, you know, the whole machine starts running and that's not the case anymore. So um, we had to accomplish these somewhere far beyond anniversary shows first before even considering how can we continue with the God Machine, which is in a disadvantage in many cases because the album is out the album did really great um but it needed or it would need the push now you know in you know being presented live but because of the situation i just explained we have to wait until late 2023 before before we can really push into such a direction Uh, did it happen to you? Because I have uh, heard that some bands at the end of the lockdowns and uh, the worst of pandemic, they ended up having like uh, two albums worth of new music because they had nothing else to do. <laughs> We are, uh, in a certain way, that is the case also for Blind Guardian. But when we did The God Machine, we decided not to keep our focus on the other songs which were composed along with the stuff for The God Machine. And if we intended to release these songs as a full album, it would demand another studio production of the year. So we would not have it at hand right now, but we technically could for the over next year. Um, what makes it difficult for me is, you know, no matter how much time you have in, let's say, in the time span of the pandemic. And no matter how many songs you write, there usually is only a handful, let's say two handful of really valuable songs. And the really valuable songs we, in, in the case of Blind Guardian, we have used for the God Machine. So what we are having in addition are interesting and quality-wise really good songs, but they would not uh, define an album. So for, for us, it's... Once we finish this somewhere shows, we start at scratch zero and um, we'll first come up with new songs because now we have no new input. You know, the input during the pandemic or the input during 12 months, you know, will not exist no matter how much time you have. I need, I need inspiration. And uh, the inspiration we have had from the pandemic uh, is, 
will not fill an album, to put it that way. I always uh, like taking trips down memory lane, if you will do that with me. I'm, I'm getting in the age where forgetting is an option. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's talk the year uh, 1984. Like, uh, what are the first memories that come up when you think about the uh, times Lucifer's heritage started? The first thing coming into my mind would be really school. You know, changing from uh, whatever mid school I was on to the trade school, where I met Andre and um, where we exchanged ideas. And basically, it was a crazy time because it was <sighs> the second wave of heavy metal. You know, have had established itself at that moment, and. Um, It became more natural for local musicians to establish heavy metal bands. And there was a heavy metal scene growing up quickly in, in Germany. And uh, even before Lucifer's Heritage, we have been a part of that metal scene as fans. So um, we enjoyed concerts. That is something I, I really relate to 84. And well, then, you know, being young and having first visions about you know a future life because i went to school to the trade school to win time um, i recognized i would not be good enough as a football player um, and i had a, a bad injury around that time as well so uh, i needed another option for my future life and uh, therefore the trade school was a good uh, opportunity to win time And that was in 84. Um, my parents luckily uh, were supporting that decision. Otherwise, I would have taken a job and things would have gone into a completely different direction. But because I was able, privileged to say so, um, to visit that trade school, you know, uh, I, I met Andre and we made our plans. It was the same year, same day when I met uh, Andre. I also met my my future wife, and uh, they both stayed stable in my life. Yeah, what position did you play as a football player? Uh, I, I was um, mostly playing midfield on the left defensive side, but um, yeah, I I was pretty much good in everything. But uh, that was. Um, Severely and abrupt ended in, I think it was in in 84, in, in early 84, when I got a very bad injury and I was not good enough anyway. It was just a dream and, you know, I, I didn't like school too much and um, I, I did not pay attention to other things too much. So I was still focused on, you know, my probably becoming a good football player. Um, I was good enough for for the city I lived in, but not good enough for the world. Yeah, you mentioned that one of the biggest things that comes to mind from uh, that year is the concerts and how much you enjoyed them. And we also started this interview with concerts. So uh, in your own mind, like your own experience, how have the concerts uh, changed over the years or had they? They have changed, um, but... The essential has stayed the same. Uh, if I look at myself, I still prefer club shows in comparison to big indoor uh, events or even festivals. Of course, festivals, especially if I talk about Wacken, for example, that has a slightly different magic because all these metal people are together and the impact is strong if, you know, 80,000 people sing your song. But uh, in In normal terms, I like, you know, being packed in a place of 400, 500, up to a thousand people and, you know, being sweaty and experiencing the artist very closely. And, and if it's handmade music, that is still the same. There are some spots in Krefeld, um, the city where we are living, um, where you here and there can experience such musicians or if, you know, I'm, I'm tending to spend a lot of time in the Netherlands and they still have pubs where, you know, local bands are playing. And I really enjoyed that. And this hasn't changed back then. Of course, the dreams and the ideas of 
you know, attending big shows and, you know, probably performing a big show were um, very tempting. But the reality is that these small shows, the, the handmade shows, I call them, are still the ones which are inspiring me and, you know, are still keeping the flame of music while the bigger shows, they become more and more plastic. And um, I don't know if that can be exceeded even and um, extended in a, in a way where people will draw the same uh, sensation. The passion certainly cannot be the same. Um, no matter, you know, which artists we are talking about and no matter how big and great the technology is combined to it. Um, yeah, it might be impressive at the first moment, but if you really look behind, it's the same routine every day, every day, every day. And um, I, I don't think that this is the right direction. And I believe we have reached the point, you know, saying that, you know, I'm, I'm talking also about the music itself. Where, where, you know, the handmade music is still delivered one-to-one. -one. If there's a mistake, there's a mistake. If the artist, the vocalist, for example, cannot sing, you will recognize he cannot sing. But if you now listen to a lot of new bands and, you know, big bands or artists, 50% of what you're listening to is recorded music. And that's, you know, not what, at least not what I'm going uh, to a concert for.